you practice really hard, you know you can be a star on the runway. Hello, Elmont Library. This is Women's History Month, and today we have a great, great guest for you here to talk about her life, her career, what she's been through in the modeling business. She's a top model before there was a top model. I would like to introduce you to Miss Shayla Edmonds. Hello, Miss Edmonds. Good morning, Matthew and Elmont Library. Such a pleasure to be here. I am so thrilled to be able to share my experience with you and with the teen world because you are our future. So I have lots to tell you. It's really hard. You know you can be a star on the runway. Always know that you're the best and don't worry about the rest on the runway. Hold your head up high, let your ego touch the sky. The world has to know that you have style. Look the camera in the eye, make that fabric fly, giving them a pout and then a smile. If your attitude is right, you will shine so very bright on the runway. Always know that you're the best and don't worry about the rest on the runway. First of all, I was from a small town, Portland, Oregon, and I always knew as a child that I wanted to be an artist. I wanted to be a model, a singer, an actor, or in some kind of uh, field of the arts. And I'm sure at this point, you probably have an idea in your head what you want to be when you reach adulthood or even now. So um, keep those ideas in your head. But I always wanted to be an artist, but in my small town, there was no outlet and there was no internet. And I just wanted to perform. I wanted to play the piano. I wanted to do so many things. And all my childhood, there was no lessons for me. There was nowhere to perform. So by the time I was a teenager, your age, I started getting restless. And my parents uh, were very busy, so I was kind of neglected. So what does a neglected teenager do? You get into trouble. And I got into trouble. I just went to all the wrong places, hung out with all the wrong people, wasted a lot of time, ended up being a teenage parent. And at that point, I knew that my acting or my, my career in the arts was gonna be over. So that was my first mistake. So I want you to learn by my, by my mistakes and I'm gonna share a screen with you because I have some points that I'd like you to remember and put in your head. The first thing I would like to tell you is to, is to respect yourself. Respect yourself and your body. I don't care how cute that guy or girl is that you see, your body is your temple. You have to respect it and don't think that nobody's gonna like you any better if you give yourself and give your body to that person. That is totally not necessary. You'll have plenty of time in your young adulthood and later on to, to have your fun and party. This is your time to be secure in yourself and take a really good look at yourself. And the first thing is your posture. When you go out, even when you're sitting at the dinner table, when you're going to school, sit up straight, have good posture and have respect for your body. I see all you young people with the blonde hair and the big lashes out to here and the dragon nails. And that is really, I mean, it may be fun for partying and things, but if you want to be respected and go out into the business world, you cannot appear like that. So get in the habit now of knowing your body, respecting your body. So there I was, I had to move back home with my parents and didn't know what to do. So I, I was looking at all my, other, all my other friends and they were in school and they, we're in getting an education and planning their future. And I said, the only way I'm gonna get ahead is to go back to school. So, so I can't stress enough that education is so important right now. Get that education. I was so sorry that I didn't finish college when I did, when I had the chance, but uh, I still had that artistic uh, drive in me. 
But even if you don't go to college, you know, everybody's not cut out for college, but please, please, please get that at least a high school education. There's so many opportunities now on the internet where you can research any career that you want to. The world is completely open to you. So get that education and secure yourself. Start, just, just get an idea of what you want to be when you be, want to be an adult. And those who plan to fail, fail to plan, fail to plan, you plan to fail. I can't uh, stress that enough. So anyway, I went back to school and got my education. I was my second year in college and I met a man who we fell in love and he moved me back to Washington, DC. And I was working and just, you know, pretty happy. And I was walking down the street and this lady saw me walking down the street and said, you should be a model. And I had no idea what a model should do or, or how to be a model. So she took me to her house and taught me how to walk and all about makeup and wardrobe and everything that I needed to do. And that is another lesson too, because it was how I was dressed when I was walking down the street. She said, you stand up so straight, you walk so nice and tall, and you have the look that, uh, that of a model. So you, you know, she scouted me out just, be, just by the way I was walking down the street. So watch yourself. You never know, and especially in New York City area, there's so many people that can help you and, and get you to different places. So when they, when you dress like, uh, like you want to be successful, that you, like you are somebody, it really, really makes a difference. So uh, she sent me to New York for this model competition, and I won the competition. I was just, I uh, couldn't believe it. And I made arrangements with my family to move to New York to um, pursue my modeling career. Because when I won the competition, there was an agent there who says, oh, I'm going to give you, if, when you come to New York, I'm going to give you everything you need to be a top model. And uh, I'm going to, you know, set you up to, for success. So I made arrangements with my family, moved to New York. And when I got to New York, the agent told me, I don't remember telling you that. So there I was, I had quit my job, left everything and was stranded in New York City. So what did I do? I started networking. I started getting out there. Just as I said, there was no internet. So I started going, looking in the phone book, which we had to do back then. <laughs> you guys are so <laughs> fortunate. And uh, I started calling people and knocking on doors every single day. I was going to look for agents, looking for photographers, looking for somebody who can help me get to, to where I needed to be. And I ended up doing some temp jobs and spraying perfume in Bloomingdale's and doing jobs that I didn't think I would have to do. But uh, you have to just uh, really keep going. And people kept telling me, you need to go to Europe. That's where they love black models and you'll, you, there's not much competition. And I started getting a little work in New York, but it wasn't enough to survive. So I went to a photographer's studio one time and he gave me a one-way ticket to Germany. And I had no idea <laughs> what I said, but that's, I said, that's Europe. So being young and ambitious and fearless I took that ticket and got on the plane and went to Germany. And I got there, didn't speak the language, didn't know where I was, didn't know a soul, but I just was persistent and I just said, I'm gonna do this. And I went to the first agency, the first modeling agency there. And she said, do you have a visa? And I said, what in the world is a visa? And oh. I had no idea you had to have a work visa to work in Europe. So that's another thing. You have to do your research in whatever field you want to pursue. Do your research. If you get a job working for some company, you know, and you want to make it to the top, look at the look at the credentials of the president or COO of that company and see his credentials and see, you know, what where you what you have to do to get to the top in whatever field. Do your research. There's no reason now with the internet that you can't find out whatever you want to know in the whole world. So my second thing is to set your goals. Set your goals. I, it's very, very important. And not only to think about your goals, write them down. Very, yes. very important to write them down. I tell you what I do at the end of the year, I, I write all my goals down and I put them in my Bible. And at the end of the next year, I open the Bible, I get those goals out and you'll be surprised at how many that I have achieved. 
And so write your goals down because subconsciously they're in your head. That's something that you want to do. And you know that little piece of paper is there. So you keep, even though you don't try, you keep doing things that, that get you closer to your goal. So write them down, put them in a special place, take them out every once in a while and look at them and make reasonable goals. Don't say you're gonna be the president of the United States in six months, you know, something that yeah. that's really not gonna happen. So make reasonable goals, stick to them, look at them every once in a while and really, really be serious about them because- There's, it, a, yes. there's, there's an acronym, um, SMART goals. Mm -hmm. strategic measurable attainable uh, i don't remember the rnt right now my mind is blank but um for the teens out there look up smart goals s-m-a-r-t and it helps you like like miss Edmund said set some goals and actually make them reasonable goals that you can actually achieve um, exactly. on, on your path absolutely absolutely so, and ask yourself every day, what did I do today to get closer to my goals? There's something that you can do. I don't care if it's writing a sentence, memorizing a line, researching something every day. The more you work at something, the closer you're going to get to achieving it. So ask yourself every day, what did I do to get closer to my goals? And be careful with your friends. Choosing your friends at this point is very, very crucial because they can distract you from what you want to do. And it's, I know everybody, you guys hang in groups and you want to go here and you want to be in with this, but uh, at a certain point, at least twice a week, take time to be by yourself and look at yourself and see what you're doing for yourself. You know, cut those friends off. Sometimes you just have to cut them off to focus on what you want to do and where you want to be. So, so any, true. So true. Any, yes, okay. I, so anyway. I, there if I, I was. I, yes, yes. I'm sorry. If I could piggyback, mm -hmm. um, the friends that you had at elementary school, if you look now, you realize some of them are not there anymore for whatever reasons. Mm -hmm. And as you go through your teen years into young adulthood, you're going to see that people are dropping off, not for any certain reasons, but mm -hmm. um, your goals changes, your desires changes. So you always want to align yourself with people who have your type of vision no matter what it is mm -hmm. and then one of the favorite slogans i love is your net worth is your network wow surround yeah. yourself yeah. with what if you want to be a rock star surround yourself with people that are into music um maybe they're a rock star already but put those people around you that can feed your desire and your passion and and, and give you that determination that's on here right Absolutely, absolutely. And even make sure those try to even find people who are above you, you know, say you do want to be a rock star, say, you know, find somebody that's out there performing and go to their concerts and watch what they do. When I first started modeling, uh, I had no idea when I got to New York. So I started going to these little fashion shows and I would sneak in the back door and sometimes tell them that I was in the show, which I wasn't, but just to watch those models. And I would sit close to the stage. I would watch their footwork. I would watch what they did with their hands. I would watch how they turned and how they showed. And I watched every single movement and I would go home and try to do and practice and do the same thing. And, and that's how I really got to know the technique of the models. So, you know, whatever you do, try to, you know, exactly align yourself with people in your business or people who are, above you in that in their business and uh learn from them and try to have a mentor in, in any kind of career that you're trying to pursue yes, yes. that's good. a big word mentorship find someone that can um teach you guide you it's better if you have a group of people that can be your mentor but if you could find just one person that talks to you realis realistically about your goals and your dreams and and like you said to let you know what you need someone that can give you the inside secrets like hey you need a visa to work in another country exactly a work visa, right? exactly absolutely because parents these days are busy everybody has to have two or three jobs or you know sometimes a couple of jobs and then they have the internet and the food and i mean there's so much to survive and to raise the family and you know your parents just sometimes don't have the time so it's really important to you know to find someone that has the time and can take the time just like that lady saw me you know, walking down the street, you know, she helped me get to where I needed to be, whereas my parents had no idea how to start, you know, in that business. So very, very important to have a mentorship. 
So anyway, um, there I was stuck in Germany and <laughs> not knowing what to do with myself. Oh, and before I left for Germany, I, um, there was a hairdresser in the studio and I had a, my hair was straight, but when I washed it, I had an Afro. And when he washed it, he, I, it turned into an Afro and he started cutting it and doing all these crazy trims and, and, and doing everything. So I had this butterfly shaped Afro <laughs> that was just like so wild. But, you know, as a model, you have to be able to carry off any look. So I had to be, you know, I had to be comfortable with that look. And I was just determined to make it. I was stuck in Germany. I had my family that was depending on me to make it. So I was determined. The same thing when I got to Germany, I started going on, going to restaurants and cafes and talking to people and tell them, telling them I wanted to be a model. Do you have any connections? Can you help me? And I did that for days and days and days and was getting so scared because my money was running thin, but I persevere. So it, whatever you're going to do, just realize it takes a lot of work. There's no easy way out in this business. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna put it in your head that you have a goal and you want to do this, stick to it and persevere. Can't stress that enough. Have to yes. be tough. All right. So this is how I ended up in Germany. Hey. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> Oh dope. my God, that crazy hairstyle. I don't know if you can see that that butterfly look. Let's see. We I do. Can, it's you do it's you amazing. It? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's crazy. But that's, and I was sitting in a cafe. I found an agent finally at this time and had gotten my visa. So I was sitting in a cafe and had uh, gotten my visa at this time. And this photographer saw me and he says, oh my God, that's the craziest hairstyle I've ever seen. He says, I want to put you in a magazine. And that's how I got started. So I started doing every, every uh, ski magazine. I had never skied in my life. And <laughs> let me just try to get to the next screen here. And there's, there's some of the ski magazines I did. You see, they put, a, put wow. skis in my hair and you know, <laughs> in the Afro and just started doing a lot of work in Germany. So, and I started making, at that point, I started making more money than I've ever made in my life. So I, sorry, but I have to tell you, it all you takes determination, perseverance, and, you know, stick to it and set your goals. So uh, at that point, I still wasn't really good at setting goals because I was just in the middle of so much happening and I didn't realize I should sit down and plan my life. But, you know, here, here comes spirituality because through all of this, I, I don't want to stress religion on anybody, but I was young, ambitious. I didn't know what I was doing, but I, I grew up in the church. And everywhere I went, I carried my Bible or I found a Bible and I prayed because I just really didn't know, you know, was, it, my life was on the line. So I think when you pray and you ask for things, it happens. And yes. especially when you're, when you're vulnerable and you have nowhere else to turn, you know, you just, you just have to pray. So luckily I met some, um, this is another a magazine cover that I did. And uh, sorry, I have to make the screen smaller again. Uh, this is a magazine cover that I did in Africa, even nice. went to Africa. Yeah, it was really just amazing. So um, anyway, that hairstyle took me all over the world and, and I did fashion shows and, and uh, people were standing in line backstage waiting to touch my hair because in certain really? parts of Germany and Italy, they had never seen a black person. They had never seen touched an Afro. So they sometimes they were waiting in line to touch my Afro. It was really good. You know what's sad? We are still going through that today. Really? Yes, I, I, mean, I believe it. There are some people, that's true. That's so can true. I ask you a question? Sure. How long were you rocking the butterfly? <laughs> a year, six months, two yes, years? Yes, no, I think it went for at least, well, at least I was in Germany for six months. I stayed in Germany for six months and that six months I did it. And then I'd say for a year because then I went on to Italy. I met these, per, these models from Italy. And this is the next, you see, um, this is how they started doing things with the Afro. They put mud in it and did, you know, did some, did some different styles with it. And uh, I want to just, um, I'll get back to that in a minute because it, mm -hmm. uh, it, it did have to go at, at a certain point. So I just want to say to, at this picture I posted because I just want to say that success requires patience. There is no easy way to get into any business. Don't let anybody talk you into any shortcuts or these schemes or something that's gonna take the quick way out. A good successful person is patient. 
So you think about this picture, how they had to put the mud in each strand of my hair. They had to draw those lines on my face perfectly. And this, this particular shoot, they had to, they painted the walls. Every time I changed clothes, they painted the walls. They actually stripped the walls down and repainted them. So it was two hours between each picture that they took that I had to wait for them to paint and dry and rebuild the walls. So yeah, you, so that's really, really in any career that you path that you take, remember that it requires patience. You have patience. to patience. Yes, yes, yes. So that's just another wall that they painted. And then after I went to Italy and did all that work, I went to Paris. And Paris is the fashion capital of the world. So that was when the Afro had to leave. <laughs> so the, because it, uh, Paris, everybody, everything is, everything is very chic and pulled back and, you know, very sophisticated. So that just wasn't sophisticated enough for Paris. So mm -hmm. I got to Paris and uh, started working in some magazines as well. Now, um, this is some of the other work that I did there. Some really nice work. Now, my first time in Paris was really not easy. I tell you, I booked a few shows, but then I went back for the second season. And I post this picture because this is uh, in reference to rejection. I was walking around seeing every designer, you know, walking the street. And during that time, most of the models were like five, eight, you know, was the maximum height. And I was five, 10. So I was lying about my height saying I was trying to be five, eight, knowing that I wasn't. So every designer that I went to told me I was too tall too tall. And in any career that you pursue, you're going to be rejected. So be ready for rejection and be ready to stand up against it. But let me tell you this story. I'd got to the last designer of the day and I was tired and my feet were hurting. And I then the designer told me I was too tall and I had had it. So I turned around him. I switched my neck around. <laughs> he wasn't ready for that. I says, tall girls can wear your clothes just like short girls. And, you know, just give me a chance and just give me a dress to put on. And I'll show you I can model that dress. And, you know, French people, they were like, oh, my God, how can she talk to me like this? They were like, wow. So he my said, damn. yes, yes. <laughs> he said, please bring her a dress. And they brought me this dress that's in the picture here. And uh, I put that dress on and I started spinning and twirling and twirling that dress and showing him and his, he was just like in shock after, after I modeled that dress. And you know, that very dress appeared the next week on the cover of Time Magazine. Wow. In Europe. So that is wow. my, my lesson in rejection because he told me no, yes. So when people tell you no, you, you give them a reason, you know, don't take no the first time, say just okay and walk out. Say, give them, try to convince them how you are great for that job, how you can do that job. Just give me one chance because tell them your experience that you've had otherwise or somewhere else and, you know, convince them that you are right for the job. Don't be overbearing, you know, try it once or twice and if it doesn't work and then, you know, go do your research or whatever you were short of and go back and show them again that you're ready. Do not be turned away and, and shunned by rejection because you're going to get that everywhere you go in any, any form of business. So stand strong against rejection. Yes, yes, love it. Thank you so much. So anyway, after I made that Time Magazine cover, I started working for all the major designers. That's when I got to <laughs> the Yes, that's when I started doing Elle Magazine. That's when I started doing Vogue. I came back to America Ooh, finally. Oh no, Vogue. <laughs> finally got back to America because you know I was I faced so much rejection in New York. And when I finally got back to New York, this designer from Paris actually brought me back to New York because I had sworn never to come back. I was ready to move my my family to Paris because you know I faced so much rejection in New York. So um when I got back here, the agent says, well, where have you been? We've seen your picture in Europe. Why, why haven't you come to New York? I say, oh, okay, <laughs> you know, yeah, no. <laughs> so I just smiled and said, you know, I'm here now. So, you know, That's don't good. be bitter about what people do to you. You know, don't hold animosity against anybody because, you know, people just do what they do. And sometimes they just don't know any better. So you have to have that forgiving spirit within yourself and just, you know, keep on going. As long as you're being successful at what you're doing, you know, don't be bitter. 
about you know what what's happened to you in the past. So I just I ended up in the September issue of Vogue, which is you know one of the most amazing two of them actually, and was doing that kind of work. And even in the British Vogue, and that that was my favorite picture, which which made the cover of of my book. And uh, before you guys were born, probably. <laughs> We used to do cigarette ads, and you know they're they're banned now. But I I was the more cigarette girl for a couple of years, and uh, did all of their campaigning, you know billboards and everything. So wow. yeah, it's it was really really great. So I had a really 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 great career. So I have to tell you that uh, you know back then in my day in my was when I was modeling we had no social media, mm. but social media is very, very, very important these days. And you have to be careful with social media. Don't waste a lot of time on social media. Sometimes even myself, I get hung up on, you know, following everybody, seeing what everybody else is doing and over, over um, posting what, you know, is really not necessary. So these are the major social media uh, posts. I don't know, I'm sure you young people have more, but, you know, as far as getting a job and, and putting yourself out there, putting your resume out there, you know, on Twitter, on Pinterest, and Instagram, I found myself over posting because, you know, I find now that Instagram should be your resume. So take mm. that. Don't don't bother. You know, if you put a picture of a beautiful bird or, or if you're doing, you know, something, you know, baking a cake or something, it's like, uh, OK, but, you know, that's not what people who are, want to hire you are looking for. So make it more of a resume. I've just gone back and deleted a lot of a lot of things and be careful what you post because I was mentoring one girl who wanted to be a model and she started posting all these seductive pictures and you know over sexual pictures on her Instagram. And I kept telling her to take them off because those are the only kind of jobs you're gonna get called for. And she didn't listen. She kept posting and posting that those pro provocative pictures and Sure enough, those are the calls that she got, you know, for the girly magazines or, you know, going on this tour to nowhere where, you know, that nobody ever heard of. <laughs> so, you know, I just eventually had to stop mentoring her and, and uh, she didn't have quite the qualifications that, you know, she needed anyway. So, but anyway, be careful what you post on there, because whenever you go for a job now, they are going to look at your social media accounts everywhere I go, even for modeling jobs. I said, you know, put your Instagram handle on there because, you know, they, they check you out. So yes. it's, it's really no joke. Now and, the kids, uh, uh, the kids are big on TikTok. Yes. Uh, so, you know, have fun with your TikTok, but also let's not be outrageous with it. Let's be yes. reasonable and respectable and remember your future. Exactly. Exactly. And the time that you spend on social media, you could be spending it in a book or doing something, you know, something online that's where you're learning something, advancing. You know, it's good yeah. to take a break, you know, but after a half an hour, you know, realize that that's enough time, you know, take a break and, you know, come back later. So just be careful. Well, I'm still shining today and this is my author picture. Thank you so much. This is really, I still have it. And I, I just did a spread in Essence once the, once the book came out. And that's from a fashion oh, wow. show that I did just last year for Fashion Week. And um, then I, after, after the book came out, it had been out like a year or so. And I said, you know, it's, it's, it's sold and, and it's doing okay. But I wanted to do more. You know, when you when you have a product or you have a job, think of ways you can build on it. And I said, this is a great story, but I always wanted to be in theater, so I wanted I want to do a play about the book. So I I wrote myself a one woman show based on the book called A Star Alone, and I performed it in a little restaurant. And the there was a guy in the audience. He said, this is such a good story that you're telling. He says, why don't you make a bigger show of it? And so I wrote the script. I hired the musicians. I had rehearsals. I did the costumes. I did the music. I did everything. And I sing as well. So I did a, a play, a one-woman show. And just so happened that man that approached me was from the New York Times. And that's how I appeared in the New York Times, the world's number one newspaper. Yes. He talked about my book, 
my life, my play, and all the times that I was in Paris and the golden era of models in Paris, because when I was in Paris, that's when the black models took over the runways. There were so many models, black models that never could get uh, hired in New York that uh, worked in Paris. And nobody really knows these models. And that's why I wrote the book because I want to give exposure to those, those models. Because when people think of top black models, you think of the same ones, Beverly Johnson, Iman, and you know the, same, the top names. But there are so many that actually lived in Paris for years who worked for the top designers, who they're all mentioned in my book and um, they're not recognized. So this article in the Sunday, uh, it was on the cover of the Sunday styles of the New York Times, which was, this is like the top, this is the top newspaper in the world. So after that, the books started selling like crazy. I, nice. I just, like, I couldn't get them out fast enough. It was just such a boost. And it just really made such a difference. That's, the, that's the, another picture from the, from the article. And uh, that's from the play itself. And I had two sold out performances that was just getting attention from the big agents uh, all over New York City to take to a bigger theater when COVID hit. Mm. So COVID really, really just knocked me off my, <laughs> off my seat. So uh, I just had to, you know, there's nothing you can do. So I just had to wait my time, but I'm just waiting for everything to calm down again so I can get back out there and get my feet, get, get, get running again. So uh, I wish I could see you all and have questions, but I just really hope I have encouraged you to be who you need to be, be somebody, make a difference. And the first thing really just believe in yourself, believe that you have a right to be at the top, just like anybody else in the world. You know, Don't hold back on anything that you believe in that you can do. The world is at your fingertips now. So be encouraged, be strong, make your mark, be fearless, stand up against all the rejections, stand up against everybody. Get yourself, your physical self in order, your mental self in order, and be the change that we need. And you know that we need change. So Thank I'm you. depending on you, young people. I'm depending on you. I'm going to look out for you. <laughs> Thank Straight you. Straight so from much. a top model. Believe in yourself and make your mark and then be effective in your power and be the change that we, the community, all of us need. I love it. I Thank love it. So I much. It. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you've had a, uh, a, you still have a phenomenal career and yet COVID did, um, COVID knocked us off for a second, but um, yes. we've learned to readapt. We've learned to refine. We've learned to um, see what we can do better now. Exactly. Um, that's one thing I took from COVID. Um, um, yes. What can I do different now? And yes. we've, had to, we've had to transition through the grief and the pain. And remember, we had COVID. We also had the racial unrest. Oh, um, my gosh. Black Lives Matter. Yes. So for, yes. For certain of us, we're dealing with that as well. Yes, exactly. And even the one thing with COVID, I did not let COVID get me down either because uh, I had been writing poetry since I can remember. And I had all these stacks and volumes and um, poetry hidden away. So I started gathering all these things. I'm like, oh my God, these are just like, I can't believe I wrote these over 20 years ago and they still sound good. So I put them, I started writing a poetry book and I got about three quarters of the way through it. And I was uh, thinking of adding one of the poems that I read in the book to, to the play because it, it was called Top Model. And I said, this is a great song for the play. So I called my friend who's a piano player. And I says, can we just look at the song and you know maybe we could put some uh, music to it. So I took my poetry book to him and he started thumbing through the poetry book. And he says, oh my God, these are great songs. These are great words. He said, he says, let me have them for a week. So I went back after a week to pick them up and he had put music to eight of my poems. Wow. So I have just finished recording the sixth one. I, so, yes. Yeah, so I'm working on a CD of, um, 
of all original tunes because I've even written songs before this that I've again put to the side. So, you know, this is the time to create. This is the time yes. to go back through all that you have done, gather yourself, get new ideas, because I had no idea that, and the pianist told me, he says, you write in a rhythm that's so easy to put music to. And we, I hired musicians to go into the studio and we just have had so much fun, you know, recording these songs. So that's, you know, there's so many other projects. I'm sure if I keep digging through my, my files, <laughs> I'll find somebody, but keep going. Just because this COVID is here is no reason for you to sit still and like, oh, there's nothing to do. I'm bored and, you know, to waste your time online, you know, dig inside yourself, read, read, read. I cannot Im encourage you enough to read because the more you read, the better spoken you are. You speak better, you're more knowledgeable about even little things. It's, it's even if you don't read serious books that, you know, like textbooks, I love to read autobiographies because mm -hmm. you see how people struggled, how they came from nothing and what they did to change themselves and how they made it. And you learn from their mistakes and you learn or from their, their progress and how they did it. So that's encouraged me a lot along the way as well. But whatever you're, you love, you know, read a book about it, you know, any kind of books, read a African history book, know about your ancestry. And, yes. and uh, you know, it's, it's very, very important to, to, to know that. And, um, you know, if you can go to college, there's so many opportunities now to go to college. There's, um, you know, athletic scholarships, there's academic scholarships, all kinds of ways to go to college. If you want to go to college, believe me, there is a way. Get a grant and go to college. Uh, and if you do get into these colleges, especially these elite colleges, take concrete courses. Don't go in there, go and take uh, Asian poetry or uh, Japanese history or you know, Japanese uh, um, uh, artwork, art. origami, <laughs> yes. You know. Take some substantial courses that are going to get you ahead in life, you know, especially the athletes. I have a son that was an athlete and went to an elite college and he did that exact thing. He just thought he was so into the sports and didn't think he needed the academics. So he took these little rinky dink courses that meant nothing and didn't listen to me. And, you know, when he finally graduated, you know, he had to go back and retake courses that, you know, would, would put him ahead or take online courses, you know, to, to get him a great job that he needed when he had the opportunity right at hand. So don't take it lightly. You know, I know you enjoy your sports or you enjoy whatever scholarship got you in there, but take your college education seriously because you only have one chance at that. I mean, you, of course, you can go back at any time, but while you're young, do it while you're young. You know, people... Why Yes. Well, I'm gonna say while you're young, get it done. <laughs> oh, that's a great one. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, so where can people find you? Uh, I am on uh, shaylaedmonds.com is my website. And in Instagram, I'm at Shayla Edmonds. Uh, everywhere is Shayla Edmonds. Uh, Twitter is at Shayla E. And um, I don't occur if you want to read the book, it's uh, available on Amazon or through my website. And uh, you can see all types of all the other things that I, I do. I, I was even I even did some impersonator work of, you know, when I was out singing, I impersonated uh, Tina Turner and, and did private parties, made a lot of money with Di impersonating Diana Ross and Tina Turner at parties. So, you know, anything that's artistic, I try it. You know, the, yeah. the only thing they can do is throw tomatoes or eggs at me and say, <laughs> So, no you know, eggs, you no just eggs. have to have that drive and just have that, that uh, determination to try things and, you know, without fear, don't be shy, don't fear anybody or anything. You are strong, tough, beautiful, young people. So go for it, you know, whatever is on your mind. Woo -woo! Do you hear <laughs> that, Elmont Library, young adults? Thank you. The top model, Shayla Edmonds. Just drop some jewels for us to give us a piece. And you know, all that information she just gave us, that's just a piece. She didn't mention other parts of her life that are spectacular uh, over obstacles. Um, so I encourage you, if you can, read her book. It's on Amazon, it's on her website, shaylaedmonds.com. And it's um, called Wild Child to Couture Style. 
<laughs> what does right. tell us what could turn me? Because I I think I read that when someone said the word to you first, you didn't know what it meant the first time you heard it. Yes, yes, yes. When I first won the award for the won that trophy, the model competition, they said it was, I was the couture model. I'm like what is couture that I never heard of that in my small town. And even still, when I sell books or do book talks, a lot of people don't know what couture is. And it is the highest level of model that modeling that you can do. This is where you model for the, the queens and the contessas and the princes and the, you know, people that nothing that you put on your body costs less than $10,000. You know, it's really, it's the top, top level. All these, all these clothes are made by hand. There is no machine. These, these are made by hand to fit your body precisely on your body. So that's really a highest level of modeling that you can get. Couture. I love it. Well, that's our couture style. Yes. I'm at Library. Happy Women's History Month. Um, we're celebrating the great work of women in the past and in the present. And we want to celebrate your work, um, young ladies. Um, tomorrow, if tomorrow's the day we celebrate you, let's make it happen. Um, we have to remember the impact and the input of everyone in society. And for too long, women were denied the many rights men had in America and around the world. And um, um, Ms. Edmonds, it's, a, it's an honor to speak with you. I'm glad you were able to talk to the teens. Um, you're definitely a trailblazer. You're definitely a trendsetter. You. When we talk about excellence and then we talk about black excellence, you are exemplifying that. And it's an honor to have you with us today with the Elmont teens and sharing your life. We appreciate you so much, so Thank much. You so much. Thank you. And happy Women's History Month. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Big success. <laughs>